not every day that I get to park somewhere like this, a place that horses and carriages, the great and the good of years gone by, have arrived at the Vine Estate here in North Hampshire. But today is no ordinary day, because today I'm going to be treading in the footsteps of Sir Walter Raleigh, of Elizabeth I, and of Henry VIII himself, as I try and win the chance to become Master of the House. Five miles away from the gleaming towers of Basingstoke, but the contrast here at the National Trust's Vine Estate in North Hampshire, well, it, it couldn't be more striking. Gone are all the trappings of 21st century life to be replaced by somewhere that has literally hundreds of years of history instantly on show. But how did the Vine get its name? Well, the first recorded reference to this place as the Vine dates from the year 1268 and refers to a time when it's believed this was the site of the first vine grown in England, when the country, like the rest of the Roman Empire, was under the rule of the Emperor Probus. It's easy to see how that could be the case as well, because the main road between the Roman settlements of nearby Silchester and Winchester used to run close to the edge of Morgaston Wood, which today in the 21st century is on the Vine Estate itself. Simple, therefore, to picture hordes of Roman soldiers passing by here. But more of wine later. Now, the vine has enjoyed a long and varied history, but the house came to particular prominence under William Sands, when, in 1510, King Henry VIII himself came to stay. At the time, the king had been on the throne for about a year, and was making one of his summer progresses from London to the homes of some of his leading courtiers. And as William Sands was destined to become Lord Chamberlain, the King was to make two return visits here. Now picture that. We've all had guests to stay, but imagine learning one of them was going to be the monarch. The house today is about a third of the size of the one King Henry VIII loved to visit and was built by combining, picture this, a chantry chapel a moated manor house and numerous other buildings, all of which occupied this vast north lawn and stretched right the way down to the edge of the current lake. A far cry from the Tudor powerhouse of the 16th century. Well, the vine may have changed, but I'm told King Henry VIII definitely left his mark here and that his presence can still be felt in the house today. So, I better keep my eyes peeled. It was over 100 years later that one of the most famous additions was made to the vine by a man who was Speaker of the House of Commons in the last Commonwealth Parliament. Chaloner Chute reduced the size of the house, instead deciding to show his status by commissioning the vine's classic portico. Now, as you can see, it's impressive as it is, but picture it over 350 years ago when it was so unusual as to be the first domestic one of its kind in Britain. Time now, though, for me to head inside. Firstly, in search of Henry VIII, and secondly, to keep an appointment which could see me becoming Master of the House. Looking round the vine today, it seems to me that it wasn't just in London that the political skills of William Sands were put to good use, that they're also in evidence here at the Vine. For example, today, this is the tapestry room, decked with a wealth of Persian and Chinese and Indian-influenced tapestries. But in years gone by, believed to be where Catherine of Aragon herself stayed. Plus, it leads on to something even more striking. This magnificent oak gallery is something practically unique in Britain. Now, of course, many mansions have long galleries where the great and the good would relax and exercise in bad weather. Many of them are wood-lined for warmth. But this one has 400 individual and intricately carved oak panels lining its length. 
Each one has got the badge, the crest, the emblem of a member of the Sands family, and also their associations, their royal connections, their status symbols. For example, on this one to the side of the door, which would lead through to the King's Chambers, you have the initials of William Sands, the WS, just up there. The other side of the doorway, there's the fleur-de-lis, representing King Henry VIII himself, and above that, the pomegranate of Catherine of Aragon. All very well and good, you might think, and absolutely that's the case when the king came here with Catherine in 1510. But imagine the atmosphere when he returned here in 1535 with Anne Boleyn because they must have seen these emblems, these crests too. It really is a symbol and a testament to William Sand's diplomacy that not only did he stay in favour of the King, but also that this Oak Gallery is here for us to enjoy today in the 21st century. I guess a contemporary equivalent would be if you or I went to a friend's house and saw there on their mantelpiece a photograph of you and your ex. During his visits, it's in this part of the house, in a suite of rooms, that King Henry VIII himself is believed to have stayed. And, like her father, Queen Elizabeth I was entertained here at the Vine in 1569, returning later with Sir Walter Raleigh and the French ambassador in 1601. Bringing us right up to date, though, is a much more recent discovery here at the Vine, which I've been given special permission to look at today. Discovered in the attic in recent times here at the house were clothes that have never been worn, a wealth of waistcoats, shirts and the like, which are in almost as good as new condition, but are over 200 years old. Take a look at that. Oh, hello there. You must be Kelly. I am, yes. Nice to see you. I'm Martin. Hi, Martin. Now, I understand it's you that stands in the way of me becoming master of the house. It is. What do I need to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> nothing too hard, just don't worry. Okay. We're going to send you around um, the property with some of our volunteers uh -huh. um, and show you all the wonderful things we've got to see around the house and okay. in the gardens. Uh -huh. And then you're going to come back and answer some rather challenging questions. Oh, very good. And my reward's going to be? Your prize yes. um, will be that you all enjoy an afternoon as if you're master of the house. Maybe taking tea in the saloon, walking around the Oak Gallery, etc. Very good. But if you don't pass, uh -oh. um, you'll be set up doing some of our more difficult uh, tasks that we have around the property, um, very important tasks that help us keep the property going, but you might find slightly more arduous. Such as? Uh, plenty of cleaning, vacuuming, digging, uh -oh. all those sorts of things that just help make the property <laughs> look at its best. I I'm liking the first option better. Okay, then you're better be up for the challenge. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a fair cop. <laughs> How long have I got? An hour. And when do I start? Now. Now? Okay, I'm, I'm off. See okay, you later. Bye. Ah, Jenny? Uh -huh. Nice Welcome to see you. Martin. I've been set a mission by oh, Kelly to find out as yes. much about the vine as possible. So, what's good to know about the library? So much by the look of it. Oh, absolutely. Well, you've got to say hello to Speaker Shoot. Oh, indeed. Hello, he Speaker Shoot. Yes, he is the gentleman who bought the house in the 1600s and was the start of the Shoot family uh -huh. here at the vine. A very respected gentleman in the. the at the end of the Civil War, really. He was the one who amalgamated and put the foundations of our democracy that we have today. Oh, really? Really. A incredible man, uh -huh. incredible man. We've got to have, got to tell you about the first edition Jane Austens. More incredible characters. Absolutely. She used to come here to the Vine, to the parties. Her brother was the vicar, vicar of Sherborne St John, so he obviously used to come to see the family here uh -huh. at the Vine. And her brothers and the 
boy shoots here were all very good friends, so they got on all really, really well. So Jane Austen would have been in this Absolutely, room? Absolutely, more than likely. Wow. thing with Jane, though, she yes. also used to uh, do a, something of an analysis of the people that were here. Okay. And one of the ladies, uh, she based one of her characters, Fanny Bryce, on. So, you know... She blended them all together, you <laughs> real life. I suppose yes. a skill of an author, and that's Absolutely. funny um, from Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park, yes, Mansfield Park. So much to take in. I'm mm. heading off to the garden shortly. Before that, lots more to see in the house. There Shall we? Is. Yes, yes, there let's go off to our next room. <laughs> Thank you very much. I always feel when I come down these stairs, I should be wearing something glamorous and glittery. But you are. Well, uh, not well no, 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 well, <laughs> I try, it's to do justice to what John has tried to create here. He only had a very, very small amount of space, John Shute, and he was trying to create a really spectacular and amazing feature Thanks. in this small space, and I think he has. He Even absolutely though has, yes. You do feel as if you're in the middle of a wedding cake, <laughs> but don't you feel you have the influences of the Wedgwood designs? Indeed, with the yes, blue yes. And white. And so you have all these amazing features going on. And also, I think during the Second World War, uh -huh. when we had the boys' school here, the Tormor Boys, they used to use these, this staircase as their stage. Oh, really? And they used to do their acting and their performances, Christmas time, etc. all up here. Can you imagine the joy that they must have felt? Imagine having this school in here. That oh, was during the Second World during War. During the Second World War. One of the things that strikes me about mm. the vine is that so many of the rooms are so contrasting. Have you got something yes. else you can see around the Absolutely. corner? Absolutely. Shall okay. we go and Yes, indeed. On? Yes, indeed. And welcome to the saloon. Thank you very much. One of yes. the most impressive rooms here, the best till last. It's like the jewel in the crown. Really. <laughs> Quite. It's an incredibly busy, busy room in here. Absolutely, so many paintings. Absolutely. I think it also makes it incredibly busy with the bosses that are on each of the panels. They are even behind the paintings oh, as really? well, which is amazing. When the house was given to the National Trust back in the 1950s, the bosses weren't there. And about 16 years ago, when the, the renovation work and essential maintenance work were done on mm -hmm. the house, they didn't have the bosses there. The, there were the, no bosses. These are sort no. of what look like flowers at the yes, centre of the panels. Yes, they're flowers. They're, they're almost like glorified drawing pins. <laughs> but in each of the panels, there was like a hole. Okay. So the National Trust went back to some of the wonderful little drawings and watercolours that we have that were done by people who lived here in the mid 1800s. And they saw that they had all these dear little bosses. So they actually had them created and returned to where they should be. So now the room does look so incredibly like the rooms that we had back in the mid 1800s. So we're very, very lucky here at the Vine. Sure. With so many items that have always been here. It's wonderful. And now we can see it as it was again. Absolutely. Terrific. Absolutely. Jenny, thank you so much. Lovely to see you. Yes, lovely Forgive to see you. Forgive me dashing off. I've got to go on an appointment with Chris in the garden. In so I'll the catch garden. You later. Yes, have a wonderful time. And fingers crossed it doesn't rain. <laughs> thank you. Take bye bye. Me. Bye. See you. I'm on a mission for Kelly and I need to pick your brains. What can you tell me about uh, this beautiful part of the estate? Okay, well, we're in the Summer House Garden, uh -huh. named after that building over there, the Summer House. Very good. 380 years old and built much like we'd build a conservatory, a place to base yourself in the garden in the summer, but winter too, they had a fireplace in there. Oh, wow. Um, and then shortly afterwards, they changed its name to Banqueting Room. Sounds much more It does, posh. but banquet meant something different then. Ah, right. It, uh, it was a case of the family would meet in the house, have their main meal, mm -hmm. come for a walk in the garden, and then they'd end up here for, well, their version of our coffee and after eights. Mm -hmm. uh, what we would love to do is to return it to its original glory. Sure, sure. And tell me about the garden that surrounds it, which well, the is so wonderfully colourful. Yeah, the garden itself was laid out in 1995. Mm -hmm. Edwardian in style with clipped yew hedges, flower beds in the lawn um, and herbaceous borders on two sides. Called the Summer House Garden mm -hmm. for two reasons. Firstly, it's right by the Summer House. Of course. 
but also if you have a look at this bed here and it's the same at the far end yes it has the footprint of the summer house oh i see a same Greek, shape yeah a i Greek see cross. And the bed in the middle is the dome. Oh, I see. So it reflects the design of the summer it house does. itself. It does, exactly, yes. And just beyond the summer house, on the other side, you've got one of the most impressive looking trees yeah. on the site. Uh, tell me about that. Right. Well, in the 19th century, a timber merchant went past and he saw the tree. He wanted it for the wood. Mm -hmm. um, he came to the family. He offered them £100. That's a lot of money in the yeah, 19th of course. century. But no. So he went away. But he came back the following day yes. and offered them a hundred guineas. Okay. Okay, one pound, one shilling. Uh -huh. Now one pound and five pence. It's gone up five pounds overnight, <laughs> so we'll keep it. <laughs> yeah. well, which obviously they did. But since then, it's been known as the hundred guinea oak. I see, I see. So, that's perfect, that, because that yeah. sounds just like the kind of thing that uh, Kelly's going to ask me. Yeah. Now, where else do I need to know about uh, here in the gardens? Well, the wall garden is a, a very interesting part of the garden. So, off this way down there, Chris. Another brilliant location and a different one as well at the vine. What do I need to know about the wall garden for when I get grilled by Kelly? An interesting one. <laughs> well, I, I guess the first thing is when it was built and uh, the walls first went up here in the 18th century. Okay. Probably put here by John Shute. Uh huh. Uh, the kitchen garden, providing fruit and vegetables and flowers to cut for the house. So what are the main highlights you would say visitors should come to the walled garden for? Well, a, a variety of different types of, of vegetables, uh -huh. fruits, but also the, the glass house over there, which part of it's laid out much like an 18th century glass house would have been laid. OK, I'm trying to digest all these facts, but I'm aware I've got to get back to the house to meet Kelly. So Chris, thanks very much. Yep, you're welcome. I'll see you later. Yep. Okay. Time's up. It is. I'm back. Uh, I think I've probably gleaned as much as I can in the time from Chris and Nick and the team. So let me just get this straight. Uh, you've got some questions for me. If I do well, I get to be master of the house. Yes. Bound to happen. If I don't do so well, it's servant of the house or something equally lower down the pecking order. It is. Okay. Fingers crossed. What have you got for me? A minute to yes. answer some of my questions, uh -huh. starting from now. Name three of the outbuildings on the Vine Estate. There's the ticket office, there's the lodges, the Brewhouse restaurant. Okay, that'll do. Good stuff. Which author drew inspiration for her character Fanny Price following her family visits to the Vine in the 19th century? I don't know, um, Emily Bronte? Jane Austen. That's what I meant. Where in the house are there to be found a wealth of policemen's truncheons? I'm guessing saloon. Anti chapel. Next door. <gasps> what once caused a boy to be lost below ground at the Vine for several hours? Was it that he was stealing apples from the orchard? <laughs> he was helping Wigget Chute survey the drains. Miles away. Which wall hangings in the house was Caroline Wigget Workman frightened of as a child? Oh, that's the tapestries in the tapestry room. Correct. Yes. Name the trees that can still be seen in an avenue planted in the late 1800s. Apple trees? Lime trees. Mm. What age is the 100 guinea oak believed to be? Uh, 500 years? Oh, 600. Close Just a enough. few hundred years between people. Right, OK, I believe our time is up. I don't think you did particularly well, Martin, and I don't think we're looking at seeing you of Master of the House. That means you worked, do you? <laughs> what does that mean, then? I mean, it was the time. It was the time factor. That's the bit I found difficult. The pressure. Um, never mind. I think we need to go and find you something else to do. You're very unforgiving. <laughs> OK. Now? Now. I know my place. <laughs> Hold it right there. Hello, Martin. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm on a mission. Kelly's set me, well, quite a few tasks, quite frankly. So whether you want it or not, you've got my help this afternoon. Uh, but before you give me a, a job to do, what does your role here at the Vine entail? 
Well, I'm the head gardener here at the Vine. Uh, aside from all the practical jobs we do, we also um, help out with all the events on site. And, and during the course of any typical year, we have lots of events. Starting off in the beginning of the year, we, we've got Easter and, and, and such like, and we have uh, trails around the gardens, Easter egg hunts, that kind of thing. Through the course of the year, there are, there are plays, and we, we help out with those um, sometimes. And well, all the staff and volunteers often get involved. And of all those things, what's your favourite aspect of the vine? Um, it's difficult. I think maybe it might be the, the 18th century landscape mm -hmm. part of the garden. So that runs out from the house uh, across the, the, the north lawn, across the lake, out into the parkland. Hasn't changed for 200, 250 years. Uh, it was designed uh, by John Chusett, and I think a lot of the people that come and visit the vine, they often say what a, what a, a good feeling uh, the place has and how relaxed it makes them feel. So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think probably I'd choose that. Um, now, what can I do for you? Well, here we go. This is a... Dangerous piece of office. kit. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and I think what we need to do... Yes. If you can help me... Radio. ...cut up some of this... Okie dokie. Um, ...so we can get it through our chipper and shredder. Okie dokie, you get on and I'll see you later. I'll do my best. Cheers, Nick. See you later. I've been called in here today to um, give my attention to this painting because uh -huh. they have discovered some mould on the front of the painting and apparently they've already dusted it off slightly mm -hmm. but um, I'm really here to just give it some more attention. Um, I'm, I found some flaking on the frame, there was okay. some gild, loose gilding which I've consolidated and I'm going to dust the front and the back and I'm really looking more closely at the paint surface. Obviously lots to do, I'm here to either or help, hopefully not hinder. What is it I can help you with? What I would suggest is if I lift the painting, okay, pass it over to you. And this is an important painting at the Vine because this is of Charles Chute, who um, donated the Vine to the National Trust in 1956. So we're talking about a valuable piece of artwork here for the house. I'm going to put him face down on the table. Okie dokie. And I will give you my little museum vacuum cleaner, which is a specially designed. Hoover, which is being used for paintings. Oh, so I'm disturbing the dust, yeah. and as I do so, I'm vacuuming it up just exactly. like that. I mean, am I pressing down too hard? You're doing really well. Thank you very much. I'm already thinking of the next step. Oh, okay. Yes. So, and what is the next step? The next step would be, um, you can see all these little wooden keys, uh -huh. which are obviously sitting in the so-called stretcher to so you're able to expand the canvas so it has enough tension. Mm -hmm. And so I need to drill holes into these little wedges. And it has happened before that people have drilled through canvases. It sounds far too delicate for me. <laughs> yeah. I've got lots of other jobs I need to get <laughs> so I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you very much, Sophie. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, and thank you very much for your help. was the site of the first vine in England, I can't not take home a souvenir, can I?
Kelly, thank you so much for having me at the Vine today. It's been a pleasure. I know it's not quite what I expected. I didn't get to be master of the house, but I have got an appreciation now of what goes into maintaining a beautiful place like the Vine, and I shall definitely be back. Thank you very much. You'll be most welcome. Nice to see you, Kelly. Thanks, bye bye. Martin. Now. Bye bye. And with my day at the Vine drawing to an end, I'm not the only one who's sorry to be heading home. I'm just going, we've had a lovely day at the Vine. Um, I live in Basingstoke, which is, I don't know, probably about five miles out of the area. Um, so I come here frequently. Basingstoke's a, a very big, busy town. And so it is amazing when you come here and it's so close and it's so completely different. My memories of here are those of a schoolboy in a rather unusual building for a school. I've been reading recently uh, the, the old school record of that time and this is written, and uh, uh, um, a part of it is a boy describing his arrival here. He was coming from Deal, from the school. He was obviously older than I was, and he said how they, the boys, were absolutely awestruck by this building and the huge rooms and the huge amount of space around it. My best room in the house. Ooh. Um, Oak Gallery. <laughs> it's got a nice smell to it because of the flooring in it. Um, the reeds, it, the flooring's made from reeds and lavender and some of the objects in there I like. My special memory of the vine is when I was a room guide in the chapel looking at the beautiful chapel glass which is very clear and jewel-like colours and very beautiful. Um, that is the glass that's equal only to that of King's College, Cambridge, which was commissioned by Henry Tudor. When I came round the house a number of years ago with my wife, the, the steward on duty in the gallery bedroom, the first of the two bedrooms you come to on the tour, opened the cupboard in there and it had an incredible wow effect because in that cupboard are three silk and satin hand embroidered waistcoats absolutely spectacular and in near mint condition it has an incredible effect it was a sunny day and this color just sort of went Phew. children love it and we pop out on a saturday afternoon sometimes just for a walk and you'll see all these little toddlers in the wellington boots dashing around and it gives them freedom it's marvelous you know i don't think a lot of people in basin so realize what a, an asset they, they've got here. I'm sorry to be going home really, but I will be back. The end of the most memorable of days here at the Vine. Now, it's not every day that someone makes a present of the past for me and I get to tread in the footsteps of a giant of history like Henry VIII here, even if I didn't get to be master of the house, which I guess is something then for me to aim for on my next visit. Bye for now.